Before we begin, thank you very much to Hudson for joining the Patreon campaign over at patreon.com forward slash TJ Omega. It is essentially a very big tip jar that keeps the channel alive and uh, keeps me from having to scrap the channel and go off to work for corporate America. So thank you for letting me get away with this and thank you for allowing me to continue entertaining you guys for as long as uh, you continue to support. So I asked you guys what your best of 2021 was and I asked in various categories and I have my own choices as well but I wanted to hear from you guys just to see how on point my choices were and how uh just how how much um I I was off base let's say that so I have a bunch of ones that you chose and then the ones that I chose. So we're going to go over this a little bit and just go through them one by one, category by category, and reveal what I believe is the best of 2021. Simple enough, right? Right. Let's do this. At the deluxe level, you guys had some pretty wide opinions about what the best deluxe toy was for the year. I saw some support for Studio Series Dino, saw a bunch of... Uh, Waspinator and Studio Series Jazz, that actually surprised me. I, I think because of his clear plastic issues, uh, he is a loathed and loved toy at the same time. It's kind of fascinating. And then Air Razor had a ton of votes, and Air Razor is very, very good. Um, my choice for the best of 2021 is not any of those. Um, I, I picked based on the one that surprised me the most as far as like just being like a surprisingly good deluxe class toy. And my choice is Kingdom Huffer. That toy has no right to be doing as much as it does. And I think it does a lot of really cool things in order to make a pretty satisfying deluxe package. I also like the added accessories he comes with. I mean, normally, like, when things come off and become a shield, that bugs me. But his vehicle mode doesn't depend on those parts, which is a huge deal for me. But also, they integrate pretty well, turning it into a bed for a work truck. It actually works really, really well. And it it elevates the toy for me uh, quite dramatically. So that one, like, there's a lot of really good deluxes from 2021. But, you know, and I'm like, I'm a defender of the Cheetor mold from Kingdom. But I, I, I'm i going with my gut here. Huffer was just, for me, a much more surprising figure and much more enjoyable. Uh, best Retail Voyager release. And again, across the board, we had different opinions. Now, I will say here, when I do a list like this, there is a one-month grace period. If it came out in December, especially late December, I generally still count it as a 2021 release because they trickle out for the first month of their existence. And then it's only, you know, in the weeks following uh, that you start seeing them commonly and they are properly released across the country or in, ca or in some cases across the world. So uh, there's a few caveats to this. So like Cyclonus was first spotted in the U.S. like on the 30th of December. So yeah, it's a 2020 toy technically, but really it is 2021 uh, I, Studio Series Hot Rod, same boat, because it's the same wave. For ones that were properly released in 2021, uh, a lot of people wanted Tinobot, a lot of people said Tigatron. I almost made my boat Tigatron, because I love that toy, but I I will admit there's some new toy shine on it that's that's uh, swaying me there. When, when I go down to it and I really think about my purchases over the last year, it's Kingdom Cyclonus. Easily Kingdom Cyclonus. There is black magic in that toy, making it as good as it is. The, the, the transformation is spectacular. Every detail is correct. It is just the best representation of Cyclonus we've ever gotten. From a, from a design that was physically impossible to one that was done to perfection, I think is a huge, huge thing to accomplish. And I absolutely love love that figure moving up in the world we go to the leader class and really for leader class i mean there's not a whole lot of them this year but there are two standouts and they're both dinobots grimlock and slug 
That is basically, it's a two Dinobot race, essentially. Uh, there's a couple votes for Galvatron, you know. You know, a couple votes for the Earthrise Optimus, though that technically doesn't count. However, for me, it could be either way. This is this could be a coin flip situation, but for me, I'm going to give it to Slug. I give it to Slug because Dino uh, Grimlock does have a lot going for him. It's a fantastic Grimlock figure. Held back by a couple little things. I still don't like the humps in his back in beast mode because they didn't figure out anything to do with his feet. And I don't like the translucent window on his chest that's show inaccurate. And I can't paint over it or I lose the Autobot symbol underneath. Uh, so I, I feel like that was a misstep in the design. I also pick Slug over Grimlock because Slug is so much more surprising. Grimlock does basically what every Grimlock toy does. Slug does some new stuff that you know that we haven't seen before out of a Slug toy or a Slag toy for that matter and it is so so good. There's some extremely clever engineering in there to make the beast mode and the robot mode both cartoon accurate the way they needed to be. Absolutely love what they accomplished with it. Absolutely my favorite for the leader class. Cyberverse didn't get a whole lot of votes because a lot of you sleep on Cyberverse, and I don't blame you. I understand why. Um, I do think there's a few figures out there you need to give a shot to. Uh, Deluxe Soundwave and Deluxe Slug both got some votes uh, from the people who did vote for it. Uh, my choice, my choice is one that I only saw one vote for. I only saw one nod to it, but I think you are correct. And it is the Ultra Class Sludge. Uh, yeah, again, a Dinobot making my choice here. Um, it is an absolutely great figure for the line. I always go to the Ultra Class figures because as long as they aren't one of the cars, the cars always have like big giant backpacks full of gimmick parts. So those don't really go well. But those Ultra Class Energon armor figures, some of those are so nice. Sludge, as a toy, is a little bit loose in the joints and spots. Cheaper line, I get that. But it is quite a nice little version of the classic Dinobot. I mean, I actually really, really quite enjoy that figure. Best exclusive. So there were a lot of, a lot of exclusives to pick from this year. A lot. There were people who said the World's Collide set or picked specific figures from the World's Collide set. Uh, Origins Bumblebee, another popular choice. The one that was Runaway, and I think, yeah, it has to be my pick for the best exclusive of the year, is going to be the Covert Agent Ravage set. Uh, aside from the fact that it's the nicest version of G1 Ravage we've ever gotten, because it's the first time we've seen the design on both sides of the toy. Um, the Ravage is such a brilliant remold of Cheetor. To the point where I wish it was I wish it was like a fully mechanical beast mode. I understand why it's not, because that then you're dealing with a brand, with a whole new toy instead of a remold. So cost prohibitive. But it's such a good representation of Beast Wars Ravage. And it's such a nice remold of Cheetor. There's so many different things that it does. Like they changed up some pretty significant engineering to make Ravage work. Uh yeah fantastic release absolutely fantastic release uh best repaint and remold again they were across the board and of course there's a lot that uh a lot to account for here so a really popular choice is a choice that i cannot include on this list because a lot of people said gigawatt and i love gigawatt i think it is the best uh collaboration figure that they have done so far but it is definitively a 2020 release i had mine like last no like last november uh i know it was more common to find it in 2021 when it got a second wave of release but it is a 2020 toy and i, I have to count it as that so i had to throw all those votes out after that inferno from kingdom ended up being like one of the front runners for me it's going to be Tyrannicon Rex from the Jurassic Park collaborative set. 
Not so much for the robot mode, because I do like the change of the robot mode. Of course, I like the black and the red robot mode. Uh, and I really dig the new head sculpt. No, what I love about the figure is the beast mode has so many layers to it. So many layers of paint and tampographs to make sure that toy came out as perfect as it could to look like, you know, like the official like style of the Jurassic Park T-Rex. Absolutely amazing job recreating it so well. Like that for me was the highlight of that figure. Not even like the brand new toy included. No, no, no. It was that beast mode specifically. Uh, Tyrannicon Rex was also a contender for the best new character made this year. Uh, and those, there, there's admittedly, we're in that everything has to be about nostalgia and everything has to be old characters kind of thing. So we don't get too many new characters on the block. Uh, all the fossilizers were uh, were were uh, on the table. Paleotrex, Ractonite, those were very very popular releases. Vertebrake. Uh, the Ark got a couple of nods as well. Ark was almost my choice, but the more I thought about it, uh, the more, I, and I'm going to cheat on this one. I am absolutely going to cheat, and I'm going to say the fossilizers in general, because let's face it, they all do the same thing, and they all have the same level of characterization. So, I, I can't. Like, I can't choose between any of them, you know? Uh, they all, they all create one greater whole, and all of them were fun to goop with. I think of all the pull apart and reassemble figures that we have gotten throughout War for Cybertron, they definitely pull it off the best. And there's they provide some of the most creative combinations as well, uh, especially because they don't they don't seem nearly as limited by like just uh, by by virtue of not being just big blocks that are hard to fit together, and by benefit of having so much like closer colors you know so they blend together better when you combine them so yeah let's just make it a tie between all of the fossilizers uh it's a cheat but hey i'm gonna i'm going with it the best selects release i thought this one would be a little bit more divisive i thought my choice for the best selects release was actually a wee bit controversial and while everyone had their own favorite repaints or more different versions of sideswipe uh, the runaway favorite was actually my choice, and that is Transmutate. It's a very weird character to make from a fossilizer, but the more I looked at it, the more perfect it was. Aside from the fact that the, the designs and the shapes of it work for a Transmutate homage, it was also the fact that it can make a convincing Transmutate silhouette because the designs on fossilizers are just appropriately freakish you know you know to put it bluntly yeah i mean it's it was a fascinating release and it worked a lot better than i thought it would um the seeing the beast mode in mostly bronze makes me wish the whole thing was in bronze because it kind of looks cool the teal was weird in the beast mode I, I will admit that but i feel like transmutate was just an inspired choice and I think it came out way, way better than it had any right to. Now, before we get into the best Transformer of 2021, you know, which you know should be something from this list or something that didn't have a category, um, we I wanted to know your most anticipated toy of 2022. And of course, that's all over the board because we're all looking at rumored lists and leaks and all sorts of chaos. It's changing all the time. Uh, one of the big things, though, um, Victory Saber, of course, of course, Victory Saber make you know makes that list. I saw a lot of people for Tarantulas, some people for Pterosaur. Uh, a lot, a lot had personal choices out of all the lists, and some were speculating on repaints that hadn't even been announced yet. For me, you would think for me it would be Victory Saber, but I don't think it is, because as good as that victory saber looks and as excited as i am for it i pretty much know everything it's going to do and everything it's going to be about and let's be honest it's going to be exactly what you expect it to be 
because there's not a whole lot more you can do with Star Saber's design that I haven't already seen out of the Masterpiece release. I'm looking forward to it mostly because it fits with my Classics slash whatever Generations uh, collection. You know, and it's going to be much more like play, playable friendly than the Masterpiece is. No, my choice, the one I am anticipating the most and most excited for is Leader Class Blitzwing. That is a big one on the rumor list. And it is an exciting one for me because it's going to, not only is it my favorite Decepticon at the leader scale, it's going to be one of those leaders that is far more complicated in engineering because of its price point and then whatever accessories they throw in. Blitzwing does not have a whole lot of accessories uh, to associate him with, so I'm actually kind of confused about what he's going to include. However, I'm excited because Generations Blitzwing was a letdown, but they improved it so much with the Titans Return version. I still think that is a definitive Blitzwing toy if you have the Takara release. Now we have one that will not have the Headmaster gimmick, and because it is going for a higher budgeted price point, does have the potential to be an even cleaner version of the character. I am extremely interested to see what they're going to do with my with my boy. And yeah, uh, I mean that's going that's what does it for me. So that that because of the mystery, because of the mystery, I am most excited for that particular figure. All right. Finale time. The best Transformer of 2021. Um, yeah, everyone had their own opinions on this one. Uh, Cyclonus, Rodimus Prime, The Ark, uh, 86 uh, Hot Rod. Uh, see, yeah, I had Slug and Grimlock in that list too. So many choices because everyone's going to have their own favorite. Um, but I think for me... And this was the, I think this one had the edge in the vote. And I think, yeah, I think you're spot on. It is going to be, for me, the best Transformer of 2021, Kingdom Cyclonus. Again, absolutely, like, flawless. Like, I, I couldn't imagine doing a better Cyclonus toy. A ma At the Masterpiece scale, maybe. At the Masterpiece scale, you might be able to make it a little bit rounder, a little bit more cartoon accurate, but I don't think, I think it's going to be a long, long time before anyone comes close to beating it. That, I mean, that Cyclonus pulls it off better than some third-party Cyclonuses I've seen, and it's just so, so good, and it's fun to play with. Absolutely fantastic figure. Probably the best bit of engineering they've done. Great vehicle, great robot. Great all around. Absolutely the best toy of 2021. So, I already asked you for your choices, but let me know in the comments if you agree. What is your best... Let's, let's just boil it all down. We'll just make it one flat. What is your best Transformer of 2021? Simple as that. And thank you for watching. Once again, this is a... This is a different thing for me. I normally wait till the end of the decade to do this. But this time, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's not wait. Let's actually get some opinions out while they actually matter. So, uh, the next year of Transformers is looking pretty interesting. Legacy's all over the place, uh, generation-wise. Should be some interesting times for Transformer fans. I hope to see you all there. Guys, I am facing the most powerful enemy any YouTuber can face, the algorithm, and I need your help to defeat him. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Every time you do, we attack that algorithm and we drive it back until it can no longer defeat this channel. Thank you very much.